Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. Refuse to waste our lives. For you're our joy and prize To see the captive hearts released The hurt, the sick, the poor at peace We lay down our lives for heaven's cause We are your church We pray revive this earth Build your kingdom streets and land set your church on fire win this nation back change the atmosphere build your kingdom here we pray unleash your kingdom's power reaching the new of hell can stop your beauty changing hearts you made us for much more than this awake the kingdom seed in us fill us with the strength and love of christ we are your church we are the hope on earth your kingdom here let the darkness fear show your mighty hand heal our streets and land set your church on fire win this nation back change the atmosphere build your kingdom here your kingdom here let the darkness fear show your mighty hand heal our streets and land set your church on fire win this nation back change the atmosphere build your kingdom Good morning. Welcome to First Lutheran Church here in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Uh, today is Sunday, August 16th. Welcome to all of you radio listeners and those of you who are watching BS video or Facebook and those of you who will be watching and listening in the various nursing homes uh, where DVDs are delivered, and uh, you get a chance to worship with us a little bit later time than, than this Sunday. But nevertheless, thank you for listening and watching and being a part of our church service today. In a troubled world and where we hear so much and read so much, and most of it feels very overwhelming and hopeless, we just need a little space, a little space in our life, where we can worship or meditate, hear God's word, receive prayers, uh, perhaps communion, and listen to some music. And this is the space and the place. 
A couple announcements. Uh, one is uh, communion, I mentioned. Drive up communion takes place twice a month here at uh, First Lutheran at the drive up or the canopy overhang, the new portion of the church. And that will take place on August 23rd. So it's, it's the second Sunday and the fourth Sunday of each month. So it would be August 23rd. And then September 6th and September 27th from 9 o'clock. So after church, I run out there and I'm out there from 9 o'clock until 10.15. And then I need to come back in for church again. So how that works is you pull up, I talk with you, we pray, we have communion, a blessing, and I send you on your way. And I have a good number of people, a little over 40, uh, came through the last time I did that, which was last Sunday. We also have, uh, we're going to worship at the park on August 30th, so at 10 o'clock. You could gather down at the park. It's outside. Bring a folding chair. There's the benches there. We're having our first communion uh, uh, service there for those kids who have been preparing and waiting for first communion. But we're not cooking food, nor are we asking you to bring a dish to pass because of COVID. But if you would like to hang around and try to have some fellowship, bring a lunch of your own. And uh, we'll just sort of safe, uh, distantly sit and, and eat. And, but otherwise, we'll just go home after the service. We live in a different time. So I, I say that I'd love to have you stay, but I understand if you want to go. Other announcements. Uh, so there's a book study going on. I would check your e-announcements uh, for that. There's a parent supporting parent group. Uh, kind of return, talking about returning back to school and education and all those things. Check your e-announcements or call in and ask about that. But also on Labor Day, September 7th, it's a Monday, I'll be out there cooking and uh, giving brats away again. The last time I did that was Memorial Day, and that was in the back parking lot. This time I'm going to be at the drive up kind of like where the communion takes place. That way people are guided by the drive. They come in one way. You just come in and say, I'd like three brats. I, we give you three brats that are wrapped in foil and send you on your way. And maybe the hopes that you would go to the park or the lake and eat it or to a friend's house or something, sit outside and have a brat on Labor Day. And that will be taking place then. And if you'd like to help with that process of cooking and wrapping and and handing them out, I would appreciate your help as well. But that will take place free to whoever comes. Hundred or 225 brats, when they're gone, they're gone. That is sponsored by evangelism. So evangelism folks may be there helping. Otherwise, we would love for you to help as well. Evangelism is simply getting the word of God out to the people and letting people know that we are still here. I think that's enough for our announcements this day. We welcome you to worship in the name of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, who walks with us and promises to be with us every step of our lives. God proclaimed to us, Behold, I am making all things new. O God, as you make all things new, make us new as well. We give up to you our limitations, our weaknesses, our shortcomings, our failures. Make us clean, make us whole, make us holy.
There is good news for us. Jesus was crucified for our forgiveness and raised from the dead so that we can live a new life. We are God's new creation in Christ. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll have our lesson read. The reading today comes from the 56th chapter of Isaiah, beginning with verse 1. Thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Our gospel lesson for this day comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 15th chapter. Jesus left that place and went away to, a dis, to the district of Tyrene and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from, the re, from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. But his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the coming and living Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. So as you're at home or in your car or wherever you are listening to this gospel lesson, it might be a little surprising or strange to think, well, a few things for sure. A Canaanite woman knows Jesus, comes to him, knows that he's passing through that part of the region, cries out to him, he continues to, continues to move. He continues to pass her by. And his disciples want Jesus to send her away because they're tired of her yelling at them. And then there's this bit about, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. All of this language seems kind of not like Jesus, sort of alarming, sort of not what we would expect when we hear a gospel story, especially coming off of those miracles, feeding 5,000, walking on water, you know, Peter stepping out of the boat. And now the healing 
of the Canaanite woman's daughter. And I would have to say, and I've said this uh, before whenever this text rolls around, it's like, yeesh, you know, this is not the text you want to preach on. But I look at what bothers me most about the text, and I would encourage you to ask yourself, what bothers you most about this text, this, this day of Jesus and this um, Canaanite woman? What surprises us the most? So we begin with the Canaanite woman. And as Jesus passes through the district of Tyrene and Sidon, it is an area, it's a Gentile area. These are non-Jewish people, non-children of Israel or the house of Israel. And this woman probably does not worship God as you and I know God, capital G, God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth. But these people, this woman has been known to worship other gods, the God of Baal, of rain, and, you know, various small G gods, as I tell the confirmation kids. Whenever you see a small G God, it's a God that we don't worship could be the god of money or the god of hail or a god of rain or the god of this or the god of that. But it's not the god that you and I worship. And this woman probably, she doesn't have a name. Of course, keeping in mind, women in that time, the biblical era, weren't always given names. Women weren't always given much value or attention. Not alone a woman that probably doesn't have a husband. She has a child. He might have left her when she found out she was pregnant and announced to him that he was going to be a daddy and he was probably gone. Here she is, no husband or man to take care of her, but defend for yourself. Now this child has been, you know, di uh, diagnosed having uh, a demon torment her child probably has seizures, probably has a disorder of a much different than the devil. But nevertheless, the child is sick and needs help. And the child has a mother who is on her own to take care of this child and find medical care. We know how hard it is to find medical care in today's day and age, right? Having insurance or, you know, getting there and being treated and, you know, how difficult it is. So if you know how hard it is today to get good medical care and pay for it or get it free, you can only imagine how difficult it is for her. And she's probably tried all these small G gods, all these gods she's prayed to and didn't get the care or the help that her child needed. And she heard about Jesus coming through that region, this miracle worker, this prophet, this she probably didn't know that he was the Messiah, although the, she did know that he was Lord, son of David, that she could go to him and cry out that he might just listen. So the whole bit of him continue to work or to continue, continue to walk and pass her by and as she was more and more persistent, calling him, maybe even demanding that he, he would help her, that he would stop and turn around and acknowledge her as a mom or a person who needed needed some care needed some help you know uh, it's good to ask for help right we we ask we tell our children ask for help if you're a teacher you tell your students ask for help advocate for yourself ask for help she's being a good mom she's asking for help and the fact that jesus there's two things, I think, two reasons why maybe he didn't turn around or turn back. One is he wanted to know her persistence. Persistence is good. It builds confidence and it endurance and strength. And we get more focused with persistence and we, we know really what's important and we go after it. Perhaps he wanted to make sure that she really knew what she wanted and what she needed and why she was there. Two is, I read in commentary that, that, you know, Jesus, God, and you and I, there's much to do in the world. 
and we can't do it all. We just simply let some things go. That perhaps Jesus knew how much trouble and how many people were suffering and he was going somewhere to someone and to do another miracle. He had those disciples to teach. He knew he was going to, his life was going to come to an end. He knew the work of the world, the work of the Father, the work of salvation. He can't simply stop for every single person who needs help. You know how that is. I know how that is. Sometimes if you want to accomplish some things, you've got to let some things go. And that was one of the commentaries that maybe Jesus was simply letting something go so he could accomplish something else. But nevertheless, he stopped. I thought about that letting go. How many times you and I have prayed to God and we think God has a deaf ear to our prayer. Maybe God is, is, is letting, letting us go. Like, you're okay right now. The plan that I have for you is going to answer your problem, your question. If you hang in there, you are going to find the answer to what you, your question is. You're going to find the help. Or maybe your persistence, keep calling out, keep, keep crying out, keep begging, keep praying. You're going to get there. Your persistence is going to deliver. I know that's true for many people. You keep praying, you keep crying out, and it sharpens your prayer. It kind of cuts away all that extra stuff that's not important, and it boils down to that one thing, my daughter needs help. And he turned around. And he had this exchange of words. Back then, we're not sure what it means or what it was like to be called dog. One commentary says that Jesus didn't mean it in a mongrel dog way, but more like a puppy dog or one that you would have compassion for, something cute or something small or something that, that you have compassion for. Today, we don't call people dogs, although you may hear that, but it is not the way that we administrate our life. But back then, it wasn't a negative term. And she understood it. She said, not fair to take the food, children's food, and throw it to the dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, even dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Even she is happy to get what's left, the crumbs. That's how needy she is but how important it is that her daughter needs help. All her faith. He says, woman, great is your faith. She had faith in Jesus. I think it really is important for us to hold on what is important in our prayer, in our crying out, to keep our eye on the healer, the one who, who can heal and answer our prayers, Jesus. Sometimes we pray for so many things that isn't even important or really needed in our life. But when it comes down to the most important thing, like your daughter, your son, your wife, your husband, your own health maybe even, it sharpens that prayer to the most important part of healing. And you start to begin to realize what you're asking and who you're asking this prayer to be answered from. Who are you talking to? Who are you asking to bring on healing? Pray to the wrong God. Maybe we put our faith in, in other things, self-help self healing or some treatment that's not, not, um, not true not real, a fad. But when we focus on the one who is the true healer, Jesus, when we can truly cry out for that one thing that's most important, it does show the measure of our faith. It does show where we place our confidence and trust. And it's seen. 
and it was seen and found and shown in this woman. Great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. And her daughter was healed. Suddenly the story becomes a healing story, right? As Jesus passes through. And how many more healings will he perform or do? Or how many more curing? How many more feedings? How many more blessings will he do before he dies? And now death and resurrection and seating at the right hand of the Father, he intercedes for your prayers and mine. Intercedes. He takes them to the God, Creator, Almighty. And he looks at our faith and says, your faith is strong. As you wish, your healing is done. See, it's a relationship. We, we have to know God, and God knows our heart and knows our measure of faith and trust in who we look to. Not everything will be fixed. Not every prayer will be answered. But through persistence, through shar sharpening of what we, and being really clear, sharpening your clarity of your mind and your heart and what you're asking for and what's the most important thing in your life can be seen, can be fixed. Together, listeners and watchers, let us pray. Let us pray for the world but what do we pray for in this world of so much going wrong? Let us pray for the human heart and the family. Where do we begin? So we go to, we, we go to our heart, we focus on ourself, our soul, we go deep within, and we go to the place of faith, the trust. We pray to the capital G, God, the Lord, the mighty, the creator, not some other God of Baal or some God of wealth or success. But we go to our Heavenly Father and we say, Heavenly Father, help this planet that's so desperately in need. Redesign it, recreate it, and refashion it into your likeness. O oh God, Almighty, the Father, Creator, come to the human family and heal us from coronavirus. But heal the hearts of division. And <coughs> we pray, O oh God, that you would know our faith and see our faith and hear our call and know that we are helpless and alone. And without you, we cannot make it. So please stop on your way by, Lord Jesus, and set your eyes on us. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Together as the body of Christ and the community of believers, hear these words of affirmation and reflect on your own journey of faith. 
We believe God is our creator and his promise to love us always. We believe Jesus Christ, fully God, fully human, experienced all the pain and joy and challenges of human life. God's forgiving love was revealed to us when Jesus suffered death on the cross. He came back to new life and has promised us new life in unity with God. We believe the Holy Spirit is God's promise touching our spirits, guiding us, even though, even through the darkest and most difficult moments of our lives. We believe God is among us in the community, mysterious yet very real. God promises to be with us always, even to the end of the age. Confident of your care and upheld by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Responding with the Canaanite woman to each petition, help us, O Lord. We pray for the Christian church around the world, for humility where the church is dominant, for courage where it is oppressed, and for faithfulness when it cannot assemble for worship. Help us, O Lord. We pray for your bountiful earth, for cleaner air, for the fields on which our food grows, for the renewal of lands and waters that have suffered from disregard. Help us, O Lord. We pray for the nations of the, of the earth, for the peaceful resolution of disputes around the world, for just policies that care for the poor and for the upcoming political conventions in our land. Help us, O Lord. We pray for all in need of healing, for the residents of Beirut and other distressed cities, for those suffering from hurricane damage, for the sick and dying of COVID-19, for the unemployed, for people without medical care, for medical workers and researchers, for the outcasts of our society, and especially for Darla Jean, Barb, Dale, Sally, Davy, Victor, Sue, Eileen, Tim, Ellen, Rick, Bill, Darlene, Sandy, Oliver, Judy, Roger, John, Christina, Jerry, Jackie, Ron, Jensen, Amy, Justin, Greg, and Wendy. Hear us, O Lord. We pray for a spirit of respect for the world's religions, for wisdom concerning the many houses of prayer, and for guidance where religion serves as an arm of the government. Hear us, O Lord. We pray for schools around the globe, for educators who must plan for the fall, and for children without the resources to access remote learning. Hear us, O Lord. We mourn the deaths of those we love, especially Arlene Newman and Luann Munchau, and we praise you for the lives of all your faithful people. At the end, gather us all into the joy of your presence. Hear us, O Lord. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We acknowledge our offerings that are brought forth either through the mail or through the doors of the church. For all things have their origin in you, O Lord, and from these riches we freely give them to the church, that the church might grow in this place and throughout the world. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, blessing it and giving it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken and given for you. Eat and do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, giving it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant to my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink and do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table was set. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Go into the world knowing that Christ is with you. Be Christ's body. Tell Christ's story to all who you meet and live Christ's life on behalf of the world. The earth and everyone who lives in it belongs to the Lord. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds centered on Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to be God. God.